Hello YouTube do-it-yourselfers. This is a 1984 15 horsepower Evinrude ignition system troubleshoot. Let's get to it. First thing you're going to want to do is take the cowling off. There's a lever under here. Pop that loose. Lift up on this handle. Give it a little jiggle, pull back, and it comes right off. In this video, the tools I'll be using are a pair of side cutters, flathead screwdriver, neo nose pliers, a loop of mechanical wire, bailing wire. I've got a 3 8 drive ratchet with a 13 16 spark plug socket. I have a 3 8 wrench and a voltmeter. First thing you're going to want to do is establish whether or not you have spark coming out of your spark plugs or not. Your two spark plugs for this motor are here and here. I'm going to pull those wires off. I'm using a 13 16 socket. It's a spark plug socket. It has a rubber boot inside to help hold on to the ceramic. It helps to keep it from being misaligned, but it also holds the spark plug once it starts coming out. We're going to want to pull these spark plugs completely out. Next, we're going to want to put the spark plugs back into the spark plug wires. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two and I'm going to wrap some metal wire around these and I'm going to connect that metal wire to a grounding surface on the motor somewhere. That way when I pull this I can see whether or not I'm getting spark to jump the gap in the spark plug gap here. I want to make sure when I'm doing this I'm getting spark out of both spark plugs. If you're only getting them out of one spark plug and not the other then that isolates at least one bank because each one of these spark plugs has its own coil. At this point I've wrapped wire around the base of both of these spark plugs and tied them together with that wire. I've also wrapped the wire around this bolt which I backed out slightly and then retightened back onto this wire. The idea being here that I can pull my starter and visibly see spark on the tip of these spark plugs. The reason why you want both of these tied together and not test them independent from each other is because while you're turning it over, there's a charge being built up. If you're only testing one at a time, that charge is building up and it's not discharging out of the other spark plug. You'll want to test both of these together. Without discharging that charge from your ignition system, it has potential to ruin your ignition system. So at this point, I'm set. I'll give it a few good pulls. See if there's spark or not. This particular motor does not have an ignition problem, but for the interest of this video being educational and troubleshooting, I'm going to assume it is, and we're going to work through the process. This chart gives you the ohm readings and the color code for the wires and the ignition system that we'll be working on. This is a 1984 Evinrude 15 horsepower, so the center line item is the one we'll be using for this particular motor. I'll also post this at the very end of the video so you can screenshot it for ease of use. Now when I say let's check continuity, what I actually mean by that is we're going to test ohms. This little symbol down here is ohms. This entire thing looks daunting. It, it really isn't. Um, there's piles of YouTube videos out there that can show you what all of this means, but essentially 
off, obviously. AC voltage. AC is alternating current. DC amperage. This is ohms, this little symbol here. And this is DC volts. So when we're talking continuity, we want it on ohms. Now there's three settings, actually five settings within ohms. Um, depending on what you're testing and what your parameters are, you want it on the lowest setting without going over whatever number that you're trying to read. So if I'm looking for a number that's 201 or greater, I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to the 2000 mark and so on and so forth. So in this case, I'm just checking continuity. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go to 200. What I mean by continuity also is when these two connect, I'm going to get a reading. That reading represents my resistance to what I'm testing. This particular voltmeter is a Harbor Freight $5 special. It's not terribly great. There's a lot better ones out there. But for this video, this is what I'm going to use. So to test continuity in the spark plug wires, we're going to pull one of these lead ends off of the coil. This wire runs through here over to your first spark plug. Be very careful when you put these back together, don't alternate these. Make sure that your upper coil goes to your upper spark plug. So we're going to pull that off. What we're going to do is we're going to stick this up inside of here. And there's a metal fitting up inside of here that I can feel with the tip of that probe. Same thing goes for this. Now on the voltmeter, you want this as close to zero as possible. You may end up with a few numbers on there, but you want it essentially zero. Now if I remove this, it gets a little crazy and as I'm wiggling this around, I get variation in number because my resistance is changing as I'm moving it up and down the probe. So keep that in mind. You just want to make sure that you're getting a good connection and you want to get that number down to zero as close as you can to zero. If you don't have any continuity, if you're getting this kind of a reading, that means that the spark plug wire is faulty somewhere and you're not going to get any power from your coil to your spark plug at that point. You'll want to do the same test for the bottom spark plug wire as well. Next we're going to test the components of the ignition system itself without taking the flywheel off. The idea of this video is to be able to do this perhaps maybe out on the water, if you're running into issues, or whatever. So, a couple of main components. You have your stator, you have your trigger, and you have your coils. We are going to test each one of those using our voltmeter in the ohms setting. In the description, of this video, I'm going to link a web page that shows what color wires go to which component and their ohm reading. Keep in mind if any of these components are outside the, the range of the ohm readings that they're supposed to be, there's a good indication that that is the component that's failed you. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is this connection point up here, we're going to disconnect it. Just a metal clip, kind of pull it apart. Now it looks like there's a seam over here and a seam over here. Make sure which side of this that you're pulling apart. You won't be able to pull this apart at all. This is a waterproof fitting for these connection points. 
just work on it a little bit. Do not pull this apart from the wires. You will break everything. You'll want to just grab it like I did. Grab it here on the rubber and here on the rubber. If you need to, maybe grab a pair of pliers, but make sure that you're grabbing it on this rubber boot, not the wires. Give it a little wiggle, and this is going to come apart. Now, for the trigger mechanism, the wire color code is white black to black white. Now you're looking on the back side of this and you'll want to just follow that through this fitting into the front of this fitting. They're not twisted inside of this fitting at all. So if that's a straight shot through here to there, it's a straight shot to these. So the specifications for the trigger ohm reading is between 35 and 55 for this particular motor. Different motors might have different settings, but for this particular motor, which is a 1984 15 horsepower Evinrude, the specifications for that trigger are between 35 and 55 ohms. I'm set at 200 ohms, so I'm well within the range of what I'm shooting for. Again, Black and white, white and black wires are my trigger. I'm going to stick this probe in here. It doesn't matter which orientation, red or black, either one doesn't matter. We're just testing resistance is all. I'm at 38 ohms, which is within the range that I just specified. The trigger is good. The next thing I'm going to test is the stator which are the other two wires that are part of this plug. Now the stator range is between 450 and 600 ohms. I have this set at 200 ohms. I will need to increase it to 2000 ohms to get that reading. If I leave it in the 200 setting, I'm not going to get anything out of it. Go to the 2000 setting. Again, it doesn't matter which side you put the probes in. and I'm within that range that I just specified. The stator is good. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and put this all back together. Make absolutely sure that you're not jamming anything. There's a bit of a stop up at the top of this on the inside, and it corresponds with this flat on the other side. Make sure they go back together just like that. They should just slide together, don't force it. If you're forcing it really hard, you've got something misaligned. Put that back together. We're going to put this clip back on. And we're going to move on to the next system. The next system that we're going to test are the coils. To do this, we're going to pull the coil lead off of the coil to begin with. Over here, there's a little bit of a metal tab bracket that's holding this cluster of wires. They are flexible. You can bend them relatively easy. Get that out of the way. Now we have another one of these clip type connections down here. This one's a little harder to get to because the line's a little light. You can get in here with a screwdriver and work at it a little bit and you can pop these things out. Clip came off. If you are doing this on the water, just be very careful that this thing doesn't shoot off the back of the boat. If it does, it's not the end of the world. You can still put that connection back together, but you will want to put something on it the next chance you get to make sure that this connection doesn't cut apart. Now again, this comes apart. Just be so careful to hold on to the rubber boot parts and not the wire when you pull this apart. In this case, I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers to hold on to this while I kind of wiggle this apart. Now on this connection here, you've got a wire coming from your bottom coil, a wire coming from your upper coil, and another wire running back in to your kill switch. What you'll want to do with this is correspond which wire goes to which coil. 
and again straight through the connection onto the prongs on the inside of this. They're not twisted or anything inside of this connection. So just follow this down and to here and this is going to be our test platform. This particular upper coil is mounted to the center prong inside of this connection. On this coil there are two platforms to test ohms. One is called the primary and one is called the output. The output is this probe here going to your spark plug, hence output. To do this, we are going to put our ohm reader into the 2000 mark because the output ohm reading is between 200 and 400 to be within spec. So what we're going to do here is we're going to connect one of these probes to this point and one of these probes to this point. We're going to read the resistance. Anything over 200 and below 400 is within range and we are within range. This coil is good. You'll want to repeat this step for the bottom coil. The next step is to test the primary. Like we talked about before, we know that that center probe inside this connection belongs to this coil. I'm going to link this to that center probe and this connection here. The range for this is between 0.2 and 1.0 ohms. So for this particular test, you'll want this voltmeter on the lowest possible setting you can for ohms. In this case, it's 200. And you'll want to make sure that you get a good connection. When you're reading really small ohms like this, every little bit counts as far as connection points go. So we're going to get inside there. And with this, I'm not going to just push it directly onto the bolt with the tip of that probe because the ohm readings are so light, I'm going to try to make sure that I have the best possible connection I have. So I'm going to use the flat of this probe against the flat of this bolt and try to hold it there as steady as I can while my voltmeter catches up with me. We are at 0.7 ohms, which is within the range for this coil. And this coil is good. For the bottom coil, you'll want to follow the second line up, which in this case happens to be the far right probe. We can test that one right now as well. And we are at 0.7. This coil's primary is also good. The third wire in this cluster is brown, maybe black. The other two coil wires were orange. This black wire is your kill switch. It runs all the way up to the front into your kill switch. Your kill switch works as a dead ground. So when you push the kill switch in, it essentially routes the power back to the ground and it kills the power going to the coils. That's how it shuts the engine off. If there's something faulty with your kill switch, this is a way to test it. So with that brown wire, we're te testing our continuity between that and a ground. We should not have any reading here at all. If you're getting a reading at all doing this, it means there's something wrong with your kill switch. Right now, the kill switch is not connected 
therefore the motor will run. If the kill switch closes the loop, it adds continuity, but it also sends the power right back to the ground and it kills the power going to the coil. So that's how you test that. So the kill switch is good. Next, we're gonna put this all back together. Again, I'm gonna use a pair of pliers and just hold that bottom piece. And again, I'm going to be very careful not to pull on any wires and make sure that those plugins are aligned before I squeeze this together. If I meet too much resistance at all, it means that something's misaligned and you do not want to jam that together. Once that's together, if you haven't lost this over the boat yet, you want to get this clip in here. Just work at it. It will go. It's just a little tough. Now that's done. We're going to put all these wires back as they were, as best we can. Keep in mind, especially with all of these ignition wires, when you're putting this all back together, you'll want to make absolutely sure that nothing is rubbing up its, against itself in such a way that it's going to rub the insulation off of the wire. That's the whole point of these clips. Keep everything stabilized, keep it floating. This clip is rubberized. The insulation is there obviously for its purpose. Um, this wire down here has got some form of heat treated tube on it to keep it from rubbing up against any of the frames. Really look all of these wires over very well before you jump to any major conclusions. A lot of times you'll get one of these wires that just rubbed out and is grounding on the ignition and that can give you a bad reading. It can give you all kinds of troubles. So really look your wires over if they're dry cracked out or they're broken. Connection ends, make sure that they're all good and snug and tight. If any of those components that we were talking about are outside of the specs that I will have in the web page linked in the description below, uh, that's where your problem is. That's where at least you can start. Then you can isolate that particular component and replace it. To put the cowling back on, there's a metal tab on the front of this cowling that coincides with a groove on the front of this motor. To put it back on, you just want to make sure that, that clip falls into that groove. This sets all the way down and this lever snaps back into place. Give it a little pull, make sure everything's locked and you're done. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, maybe a subscribe. I hope this helps someone. Thanks for your time.